Robots, robots, okay. robots. Seems like they're everywhere we look these days. And, you know, you, our listeners, you get it. You sent us this really cool article about Tesla's Optimus bought the new generation. Mm -hmm. And I got to be honest, even for a tech enthusiast like myself, this thing is seriously impressive. Yeah, it's definitely got people talking. And for good reason, Tesla's really pushing the limits of what robots can do. They're even saying Optimus is going to be a game changer. Well, they've never been ones to shy away from a bold claim, have they? But looking at all this info, I can kind of see why they're so confident. This isn't like some clunky robot from an old sci-fi movie. This is oh, like yeah. next level stuff. 20 millisecond reaction time. My internet connection wishes it was that fast. Right. On a good day. And don't forget, the 23-hour battery life, that blows most other robots out of the water. I mean, some of Optimus's competitors can barely go four hours without needing to be plugged in. It's like comparing a marathon runner to someone who just ran for the bus. Yeah. But let's talk practicality here for a sec. I mean, fast robots with great stamina, that's all well and good. But how are we actually going to use this thing? Well, get this. Optimus is already working in the Tesla factory. Oh, really? Yeah. They're using it for some of those really detailed tasks on the assembly line. And from what I read, it's really ramping up their productivity. Makes sense if it's as good as they say. And that gets me thinking about the possibilities. I mean, if it can do that, what else can it do? Could this be the future where robots are handling everything? Like package delivery or even some of those annoying chores around the house? Oh, absolutely. The article you sent mentioned that Tesla sees Optimus handling a huge range of tasks. From the everyday stuff you mentioned to even more complex things in factories and stuff. Okay, hold on a sec. So we've got this super fast, super strong robot that can run all day assemble cars and maybe even do the dishes. This is either going to be amazing or the beginning of a robot uprising. Well, you're not the only one wondering about that. The article even talked about how Optimus could change the way industries work, and it really got me thinking about the future of jobs, you know? Like, will people even have jobs? Or will robots and humans have to figure out how to work together? Right, like, is this the beginning of the end of work as we know it? Or are robots going to become our coworkers, just helping us get things done more efficiently? Tough questions, right. And honestly, it's too early to really know for sure. But it's a conversation that's starting to happen more and more. And for good reason, this technology could have a huge impact. Yeah, no easy answers there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this article had a lot to unpack, but there's this one part that I found really interesting and honestly a little strange. They were talking about Optimus being able to adapt to different cultures. Mm. Yeah, it's one thing to build a robot that can, like, you know, do stuff. But to make one that can actually understand people and how they act in different places, that's a whole other challenge. Right. Like, how do you even start teaching a robot about different cultures? Yeah. The article mentioned something about Southern hospitality versus how direct people are in the Northeast. So is Optimus going to be offering people sweet tea one minute and then talking about the Yankees the next? Well, not exactly. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but the idea is that it's designed to pick up on those little social cues, you know, like how people communicate differently depending on where they're from. And it's supposed to be able to adapt to that. So it's not just about what Optimus says, it's about how it says it. Like, could it tell if someone was uncomfortable with a topic or needed a little space? That's the goal anyway. According to Tesla, Optimus can actually analyze things like your tone of voice, facial expressions, even your body language to figure out how you're feeling. Well, hold on. <laughs> I can barely do that myself half the time. But this whole cultural adaptation thing, it's getting kind of deep, right? Mm -hmm. Like, can a robot really understand all those little things about humans? It's a good question. And there are actually a lot of AI experts who are debating that very thing. Like, how much can a machine actually understand something as complex as culture? Some of them think it's more about really good imitation than actual understanding. Okay, so maybe Optimus won't be doing stand-up comedy anytime soon. I get it. But even if it's just really good at acting like a human, that's still pretty incredible. Oh, yeah, totally. And think about it. This goes way beyond just being polite. It could actually make Optimus really helpful in disaster situations. The article talked about that, too. Now, that's an interesting thought. A robot that can not only go into a disaster zone, but also be there for people and comfort them. That's a whole other level of helpful. Exactly. Think about it. A disaster is crazy stressful, and you've got people from all different backgrounds. Mm. If you have a robot that can understand how to act around different people, communicate with them, and help them in a way that makes sense for their culture, it could be huge. Okay. Yeah, that's making a lot more sense now. But when we're talking about disaster relief, that's got to be physically demanding too, right? The article mentioned floods, winter storms, even wildfires. Can Optimus actually handle all that? It seems like they designed it for exactly that. So it's strong, adaptable, mm. and it can handle some pretty extreme conditions. 
What else did they say about it? What gives Optimus that edge in those situations? Well, first of all, it's built tough, like really tough. Yep. You know, when you think about a flood or a fire that's going to do some damage, right. But Optimus is made to withstand all that. Crazy temperatures, moisture, even impacts. Basically, it's a high-tech first responder in a nearly indestructible suit of armor. Okay, now that's impressive. But being tough is only part of it. Right. What about actually being useful? I mean, what could it do in those situations that people just can't? That's where it gets really interesting. Imagine Optimus going into places that are way too dangerous to send people, like a building that's collapsed after an earthquake or a flood zone with really strong currents. Optimus could find survivors, bring supplies, even move debris out of the way, and all while sending back information to the teams on the outside. So it's like having a search and rescue team that never gets tired or scared and they can handle a hurricane. That's something else. Yeah. But you mentioned it, sending information back. Mm -hmm. How does it even see in those situations? Does it have some kind of supervision? Even better, it's got sensors. The article talked about how it uses cameras, thermal imaging, all kinds of sensors to see even in pitch black conditions through smoke, even underwater. It can sense heat to find people, figure out the safest way to move through a dangerous area, even tell how badly a structure is damaged. Like yeah. Things that we as humans just can't do. Well, okay. That's next level stuff for sure. Okay. It sounds like they're getting Optimus ready for just about anything. So when can we expect to see all this in action? Are we talking next year or is this more of a long-term plan? Good question. And the article did mention that a little bit. Right now, Optimus is still in development. They're working on it all the time, testing it out, seeing what works and what doesn't. So no robot rescue teams parachuting in just yet. Not quite. Haha. <laughs> But they're making progress really fast. Think about it. Just a few years ago, self-driving cars seemed like something out of the future, right? And now look. True technology moves fast these days. You're right. It really does feel like we're entering this whole new era of robotics. And Optimus is leading the way. But with all this talk about its capabilities, there was this one detail that really stuck with me. It's kind of funny, actually, because it's so low-tech. They mentioned that Optimus can thread a needle. Yep. And that little detail actually says a lot about how precise Tesla wants Optimus's hands to be. Did you know that each hand has 22 degrees of freedom? That's way more than most robots out there. 22. Uh, I can't even imagine. My own two hands can barely hold a cup of coffee sometimes. But why is that level of dexterity so important? Does that mean Optimus is coming for my job as a tech reviewer? Or maybe my secret dream of being a master tailor? Well, maybe not tailoring just yet. But hey... You never know. But seriously, that level of dexterity opens up so many possibilities. Think about it. Surgery, fixing tiny electronics, even things we haven't even thought of yet. Okay, now we're talking about some serious and honestly slightly unnerving stuff. Mm -hmm. A robot surgeon with steadier hands than a human. What does that even mean for fields like medicine where precision is everything? It's true. We're in uncharted territory now, but while there will definitely be challenges along the way, the potential here is huge and hard to ignore. It really feels like a turning point for robotics. Yeah. You know, this isn't just about cool gadgets anymore. This is about technology that could change entire industries, make things possible that we never thought could be, and maybe even change the way we live our lives. Exactly. The future is full of possibilities, and of course, with any new technology, there will be questions we need to answer and things to be careful of, but I'm optimistic about it. Me too. Although, if I could make one tiny suggestion to our friends at Tesla, maybe let's hold off on the whole robot uprising thing for a little while longer. I think we've got enough going on right now. Haha, uh -huh. I hear you. Robot helpers are more than enough for now. But that is all the time we have for today's deep dive into Tesla's Optimus. From its incredible specs and potential uses, to the bigger questions it raises about the future of work disaster relief and what robots are actually capable of. I feel like we've covered a lot of ground. And we've only scratched the surface. It seems like Optimus and all the questions it brings up are going to be with us for a while, especially for those of us who are, let's say, a little bit fascinated by the world of technology. For sure. So here's something to think about as you go about your day, something we didn't get a chance to discuss. If you could have Optimus do one thing, solve one problem, no matter how big or small, what would it be? The possibilities, like Optimus itself, are pretty much endless.